Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, I'm here. Like I said, I would be. My YouTube short video a little bit later than I thought. Um, you guys see that bunny, by the way? That was, like, under the the uh, fire pit out there when I was trying to mow the lawn? Yeah, it was... He ran away, though. All right. Um, Napoleon's Martial is my favorite series within a series in my favorite channel. Go check him out. Suchet better be in this damn video because you guys have told me he's in every single one of them. If you're not subscribed, my name's Connor. Join us. Learn by history. It's fun. We love it. It's great. It's awesome. Let's do it. Original video at the top description below. If you're not ready to learn about history, just get the hell out of here. Unless you just want to chill, then whatever. Terror belly, decus pacis. Terror in war, ornament in peace. The words inscribed on every French marshal's battle. Damn right. In France, the title of We're Marshall. not just viewers, we are participants in a great channel like this that pushes us back in time onto the battlefields. Or Maréchal goes back at least to the 13th century. It represents the highest possible position of military authority. Authority symbolized right. by a marshal's baton. The title was abolished during the French Revolution as incompatible with the egalitarian spirit of the age. But in 1804, Napoleon founded a new empire and restored that he did. the ancient rank. This is Epic History TV's guide to Napoleon's marshals. All 26 have been ranked according to our own evaluation of their achievements as marshals. With expert guidance from Lieutenant Colonel Remy Pocht, former chief historian of the French army. Is that Putin? So far, we've met Marshals Perignon, Brune, Serrouille, oh, my favorite. Kellerman, Grouchy, Monsey, Poniatowski, Jourdan, Bernadotte, Augereau, Lefebvre, Lefebvre? Mortier, Marmont, Saint-Cyr, Oudineau, I think uh, Mura, Mura, Bessier, McDonald, these two guys are great. Messena. Messena's great. He got shot in the eye, though, by Napoleon, right? First, a big thanks to our hey, of course, we love these, but we're going to have to... Suchet! He's actually in it! <laughs> you, you guys are in line. Louis Yo. Gabriel Suchet. I, the reason I always praise Suchet and bring him up, and I'm, I'm excited to see him here, I really am. Number six, or, he should be number one. No, I, I'm not the historian here, but he just showed a lot of restraint in Spain when it must have been hard to do so, seeing your soldiers die. And um, it made it more difficult for people to choose to fight against you in guerrilla combat and uh i think that's a rare maybe not rare in everyone but i think it's rare in everyone when put under his circumstances that's why he seems great and i'm about to learn more about him we Jay are was born in Lyon, the son of a prosperous silk merchant Plans to join the family business were derailed by the French Revolution. Suchet, an ardent Republican, joined the cavalry of the Lyon National Guard. In 1793, he was elected to lead a volunteer battalion. Okay, every, I'm, I'm just, everything's got to be going good. Right, right, right. Good, great. Okay. At the siege of 1793, he was elected to lead a volunteer battalion and at the siege of Toulon, distinguished himself by helping to capture the British commander, General O'Hara. He also made friends with a young Major Bonaparte. Suchet went on to serve under Napoleon in his first brilliant campaign in Italy, fighting at Lodi, Castiglione, and Bassano. I think there are a few episodes I haven't seen, like there are two before, and I'm going to watch those after I finish the uh, last one. Transferred to Massena's division, he led his battalion with distinction at Arcole and Rivoli, was wounded twice, and promoted colonel. It was in Italy that Suchet learned the most valuable lesson of his career. For troops to be effective, they must be properly paid, clothed, and fed, something the French Republic consistently failed to... Imagine how... It, it kind of seems like a bad, like a dumb bargain, or... Like, it shouldn't be right to, you should be well taken after in order to not uh, loot and pillage. It's, it's easy for us to say, in hindsight, in our cozy little rooms, 
but um, j doing something that most commanders of war might not think of right away that can really give you an advantage. It might not seem like it right away, but it makes it harder for people to turn Chief. against you, like I said. Despite proving himself to be an excellent organizer and dependable in battle, Suchet never quite made it into General Bonaparte's inner circle. Whatever, okay? He went on to serve as a highly effective chief of staff to General Suchet! Brun, and then to Massena in Switzerland, and was with Joubert in Italy, who died in his arms at the Battle of Novi. Suchet was promoted to General of Division, and in 1800, he was given command of the Army of Italy's left wing. With Massena besieged by the Austrians in Genoa, the defense of southern France fell on his shoulders. In a brilliant independent campaign, he held the Austrians near Nice, then chased them back into Italy, taking 15,000 prisoners. Despite this impressive record, Suchet was not on the list of marshals created by Napoleon There's in Joe. 1804. Joey. Worse, in 1804, Sorry, created by Napoleon in 1804. Record, Suchet was not on the list of marshals created by Napoleon in 1804. Worse, in 1805, he was effectively demoted, being. I hope I don't come across as too. Like, oh, like Suchet's, the, I'm not saying I know Suchet's the best, and I can be a little, just for fun, a little more like, yeah, Suchet should be number one. I get it, I don't know everything, I'm here to learn. It's just something about Suchet made me really like the guy, and so if I overreact sometimes, then... Given command of a division that's why. in Marshall Land's 5th Corps. Nevertheless, it was a role he performed with great skill. His division distinguished itself at Ulm and Austerlitz. And the next year led the attack in Napoleon's crushing victory over the Prussians at Jena. The next year in Poland, his division saw hard fighting at Hultusk, but was then held back to defend Warsaw. Ooh, who are my favorite allied kind of general, marshals, general? I like Wellington. Uh, what's his name? Kutusov and Bucher the great battles of Eilau and Friedland. To be honest, those are only that I can remember right off the top of my head. Napoleon heaped rewards Other than on the General ones that Suchet. Were. Money, titles, but still no Marshal's battle. He didn't need it. In 1808, Suchet's division was sent to Spain, where he'd spent the next six years. Right, so he goes... His first role was to support the siege of Zaragoza. Then, on Marshal Land's recommendation, Napoleon gave him command of Third Corps and made him governor of Aragon. Suchet found his troops to be poorly supplied, ill-disciplined, and low in morale. Their first battle together against General Blake's Spanish army ended in a humiliating rout at Alcañiz. Suchet found the drummer who'd started the panic and had him shot in front of the entire corps. He then reorganized. Whoa, seeing a different side of Suchet. Wow. So he, when he means business, he, uh, hey. His troops and restored discipline. That almost makes me like him more, and it, that sounds terrible. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that, the guy caused a lot of deaths, and, uh, but it shows that he's not just blindly nice. You know, it, it, it shows me, it makes me even more confident that he was, that it was more of a strategy to treat people uh, with respect that uh, you conquered so pride with two quick That's, uh, that, the that'll Spanish. send a message all right he also faced a guerrilla war in Aragon, a popular insurgency driven by hatred of the french invader Suchet it says up there suggested napoleon's vietnam spain 1809 1811 great episode I, I would say that about all of them though he also faced a guerrilla war in Aragon. A popular insurgency driven Suchet. by hatred of the French invader. Suchet drew on French experience of fighting counter-revolutionary insurgents in the Vendée and realized that it was only by winning over the civilian population that he'd be able to make progress. God, he made it great. his first priority to ensure his own men were properly paid and fed, something almost unheard of for French troops in Spain. He enforced discipline and made sure requisition supplies were paid for. So Spain wasn't as obviously big of a threat at the time because so close to, to France, obviously it borders it in Paris, but 
obviously the it, it wasn't as seen as a um nearly as much of a threat as from the the uh, east which makes sense he told his troops i will look after your well-being and you by your discipline will give security to the inhabitants you will make them by your conduct care for the government of king joseph he told the spanish people my troops will not impede your harvests nor overcrowd your cities you're in good hands they will live in the countryside ready to protect you religion and clergy will be respected so crucially Suchet also promised protection from the many spanish guerrilla bands who behaved no see? better than bandits so it almost makes think about how much more difficult that is if if they're being um you know terrible uh you know plundering and pillaging and whatever else um then they might have to think about siding with the gorillas, even though the gorillas treat them terribly too. But now it's it's a much more difficult choice, if not an easy one, to stay with uh, Suchet. His practical and humane approach won respect and brought results. The gorillas could never be completely defeated, but Suchet made Aragon the safest and best-run region right. in occupied Spain. He extended French control of eastern Spain with a series of successful sieges at Lerida, Mequinenza, and Tortosa. In June 1811, he took Tarahona. For this victory, Napoleon finally awarded him his Marshal's Battle, the only one earned in Spain. Well deserved. Then he moved south. He defeated a larger Spanish force at Sacuntum, then took the great city of Valencia, along with 18,000 prisoners and nearly 500 guns. Napoleon rewarded Suchet with the title Duke of Albufera. But the overall situation in Spain was deteriorating steadily. The partisans became better organized and supplied. The British Navy was able to land troops on the coast to make diversionary attacks while Napoleon withdrew more and more units for his own campaigns in Russia and Germany. After King Joseph and Jourdan were defeated at Vitoria, Suchet had no option but to pull back towards the French frontier, leaving behind several well-supplied garrisons. On Napoleon's abdication, Suchet remained undefeated, still holding the French frontier. When Napoleon returned from exile, Suchet went to meet him in Paris. It was the first time they'd met in person in eight years. Marshal Suchet, you have grown greatly since we last saw one another, the emperor told him. He entrusted Suchet with command of French forces in the south, an important independent command for which few men were better suited. Suchet dutifully kept France's enemies at bay until news arrived of Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo. Following the second Bourbon restoration, Suchet was dismissed and retired to his country estate, where he died in 1826. He was still held in such esteem in Aragon that a mass was held to pray for his soul in the Cathedral of Zaragoza. Suchet was a brilliant commander, widely regarded as the best administrator in Napoleon's army. He was also one of the few who thrived with the responsibility of independent command. He never had the opportunity to prove himself on the war's decisive battlegrounds. But when Napoleon, in exile on St. Helena, was asked to name his best general, he replied, that is difficult to say, but it seems to me that it is Suchet. What is electromagnetic radiation? Me and Napoleon agree there. Um, God, unscheduled yeah. ads. Great. Me, I'd, oh, Marshal Ney. That is difficult to say, but it seems to me that it is Suchet. Touche, baby. Five. 
Marshal Ney. <laughs> Ney was priceless for his val for his valor, his obstin his obstinacy in retreats. He was good for leading ten thousand men. Otherwise, he was a true idiot. Yikes. Michel Ney was a Cooper's son from Lorraine, a German-speaking region of France on the eastern frontier. His father wanted him to become a clerk, but the young Ney, impetuous and headstrong, joined a Hussar regiment instead. He soon distinguished himself as a fine horseman and fencer, and was a senior sergeant by the time of the French Revolution. When war broke out, Ney was made an officer and became aide-de-camp to General Lamarck. He reminds me of like a Scotsman. His reports like English... describe Ney as active, brave, and a skilled tactician. Ney served in the Netherlands and on the Rhine, fighting at Valmy, Jemat, and near Vinden. Netherlands is one of the flat... I, I think it's kind of a cliche, but true. It is so flat. It is... I've never really been in the Midwest of the U.S., so I never. I did go to, to uh, my family went over to Arizona, and I'll, this is kind of a tangent, so I'll be quick. And uh, took an RV from, or rented one, <coughs> from uh, was it Arizona to to Las Vegas? Or, I mean, it was Phoenix to Las Vegas, I believe. Anyways, it was that was really flat, but also when we drove through here. It was so flat, and so I, I like to know somewhat what the geography looks like on a map like this, because you can tell it probably had a much better time moving around stuff, didn't have to uh He was go seriously crazy. wounded once and captured once. Fellow officers nicknamed Ney the Indefatigable. His men preferred Le Rougeau, the ruddy or red-faced. The 30-year-old Ney was now a proven brigade commander, despite refusing promotion more than once, regarding himself as unqualified. In 1799, wow. following glowing reports from General Bernadotte, he finally accepted the Bernadotte's rank a Swedish traitor. of General of Division. Who cares what you have to in say? In 1800, Ney and his division played a major role in General Moreau's great victory over the Austrians at Hohenlinden. This brought him to the attention of France's new first consul, Napoleon Bonaparte, with whom he'd still never served. When they met in Paris, they warmed to each other. Napoleon entrusted Ney the delicate task of imposing his act of mediation on Switzerland, which he carried out with swift efficiency. The same year, Ney married Agli Louise Augier, a friend oh. of Joseph. You can, obviously, it's just a painting, but she looks very pretty. Dauphine's daughter, Hortense, now Napoleon's stepdaughter. She paid that artist Drawing well. him closer to France's future imperial family. In 1804, Napoleon proclaimed a new empire, and Ney was made a marshal. The next year, he was leading 6th Corps to war. I don't really know how I, I'm eager to learn about Ney, to obviously, uh, Suchet was, but, um, seemed to be kind of a more kind of gun ho type thing, but, um, my opinion, it can change a lot about Ney with this, War uh, against next Austria. Part. He was accompanied by Colonel Henri Jomini, a Swiss officer have to take and a military piss pretty theorist. Soon. Ney had been quick to recognize That's his talent, giving him a job as his aide-de-camp. I need to be quiet. A Swiss officer and military theorist. Ney had been quick to recognize his talent, giving him a job as his aide-de-camp and helping to publish his work. Jomini would win fame as one of the 19th century's great military thinkers and served Ney well as his chief of staff on several campaigns. During the advance against the Austrians, Jomini encouraged so. Ney to ignore orders from Marshal Murat that would have allowed the enemy to escape. Their decision was vindicated when 6th Corps won a brilliant action at Elchien that closed the trap on General Mack's forces at Ulm. Ney's corps missed the battle of... See right there, like, a lot of places in, in driving through southern Germany and into... Uh, um, 
kind of middle <clears throat> uh, eastern France is there's a lot of like hilliness and then just these huge amazing houses and uh, this is this was like a common kind of site I went into that kind of learning a lot I love learning about World War II and I, I brought that through a lens like I made sure I wanted to go to a Dachau concentration camp or I wanted to see a concentration camp or a, uh, a death camp or work camp and that one was pretty close to where we were going it was outside Munich and so I, I wanted to go there and I wanted to see a part of the marginal line um, the French line of defense on the Germany on the German border for uh, that they I think built in between World War one and World War two and so I would love to almost go again and like even if I have to take the same route uh, with my dad and brother just alone or something and now see it through a Napoleonic Wars lens it would be like a whole different experience May's corps missed the Battle of Austerlitz but was in action against the Prussians the following year there had already been signs that Ney's aggressive instinct, which made him a brilliant tactical leader, could also get him into trouble. At the Battle of Jena, Ney ignored his so, aggressive instinct. Okay, so he was... At the Battle of Jena, Ney ignored his orders and charged straight at the Prussian lines, becoming cut off. <laughs> I want to, like, uh, put some audio in that. Napoleon, like, hey, Ney, wait up! Orders, no! Straight <laughs> he the just Russian goes lines, in. Becoming cut off. His uh, troops had to be rescued by Marshal Land's corps. A furious Napoleon remarked, Ney knows less about soldiering than the last joined drummer boy. Ney was criticized again yeah. by Napoleon three months later, when his foraging raids into East Prussia appeared to provoke a Russian offensive. Okay, so... I like him a, a lot so far. It's just in a very different way than Suchet. He seems much more of like a just a soldier's soldier rather than a general. Intermaneuvering just go. culminated in the horrific Battle of Eylau, which Ney's corps reached only as darkness fell. That summer, Bennigsen's Russian army launched a surprise attack, hoping to encircle and destroy Ney's Sixth Corps near Gutstadt. Ney, outnumbered four to one, conducted a brilliant fighting withdrawal and escaped the trap. A week later, Napoleon caught Bennigsen's army at Friedland. Ney led a crucial attack on the enemy. That man is a lion, said Napoleon, watching his advance. Sixth Corps' onslaught shattered the Russian left, leading to one of Napoleon's most decisive victories. For all his flaws, Ney had proved himself one of Napoleon's best tactical commanders, and was rewarded with the title Duke of Elkingen. In 1808, Ney commanded a corps during the invasion of Spain. He spent more than two years in the Iberian Peninsula, and like most of Napoleon's marshals, found it a bitter and frustrating experience. In Not for Suchet. See, Suchet, he's, he's just a step ahead. You know, I only I I'd be better than Suchet though for sure. I hope my sarcasm doesn't get lost <laughs> on people. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take a piss break. Be right back. Okay, we're here. Ten. He joined Marshal Massena. Ah. Frustrating experience. In 1810, he joined Marshal Massena for the invasion of Portugal, but deeply resented being placed under his command. Yeah, he criticized. He was a little bit upset for being shot in the eye. Raised every decision, helping to create excuse a him, uh, atmosphere at French no. headquarters. The French advance on Lisbon came to a halt at the lines of Torres Vedras. During the subsequent retreat, Ney again demonstrated his brilliant tactical skills fighting a series of rearguard actions that kept Wellington's troops at bay. But Ney's fury at what he considered Massena's disastrous leadership boiled over into open insubordination. He was relieved of command and returned to France. I mean, Massena had it coming, regardless of what happened to uh, his head and involving a bullet and Napoleon. I mean, you... Ney had nothing to do with that. The soldiers he was commanding had nothing to do with that. But he, he like brought his mistress. Disgrace for long. 
Napoleon knew Ney's worth in battle and that the army adored him. He'd be needed in Russia and was recalled in 1812 with command of Third Corps. As the Grand Armée advanced... Right, like, I, would, I wouldn't... If you were say, all right, you have... Who would you take into Russia? Who would you take into Spain? I would choose different. I, I would choose Ney over Suchet in Russia because of what they had to do. And I would, because it was a conquer ground, kill soldiers, attack the enemy. Whereas Spain was much more complicated than that. And uh, they were perfect people for each different scenario. Deeper into Russia, Ney was always near the action leading attacks at Krasny and at Smolensk, where he was wounded in the neck. Right. Amid the slaughter of Boris, wait, wait. was always near the action, leading attacks at Krasny and at Smolensk, hands. where he was wounded in the neck. Amid the slaughter of Borodino, Ney led his corps in attack after attack on the Russian earthworks. When they were finally taken, he was told that Napoleon would not send in his reserves to follow up their hard-won gains. He exploded with anger. What business At has Napoleon? the Emperor in the rear of the army? Since he will no longer make war himself, let him return to the Tuileries and leave us to be generals. I like this guy a lot more now. He, he, it, it I see a common theme of this. It seems like so many of the soldiers, whenever they act disrespectful in some way in concerning napoleon it's always just seems from a place of love and respect rather, rather than actually hating them and uh yeah and napoleon seems to recognize that too even when people cross him or whatever he seems to be pretty fair in his uh description of them when asked for him it was typical of ney's lack of restraint but his blind faith in the emperor did not survive russia Right, it's Henceforth, sincere. he'd fight only oh. for France. It was during the retreat from Moscow that Ney ensured his place among the legends of military history. Just two weeks into the retreat, the Russians routed Davout's rearguard at Vyazma, and Ney and Third Corps took over. Ney was not only an instinctive tactician and apparently immune to fear or fatigue, he could inspire or bully other men into superhuman feats of bravery and endurance. I just saw a message, by the way, of from like Light X Heaven on like the rabbit video or something. Of like, where's Suchet? And I'm, I didn't respond though, but I just finished uh, watching Suchet right there when I saw that message. French officer later recalled, I can see him still at the spot where the fighting was hottest, speaking to the men, indicating to the generals what positions they should take up, animating all hearts with the confidence that... It reminds me, it makes me think of like uh, the D-Day Omaha Beach scene, uh, Private, uh, Save a Private Ryan, where Tom Hanks' character, like that moment where like the, something explodes and everything goes silent and there's that kind of like... noise. <laughs> that wasn't a good... Uh, 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 mimic of it but i just imagine that kind of fire and they just being like oh yes you go over there and then someone just gets blown up right next to him and he's just very stoic aggressively stoic if that makes sense um just he seems more even at ease in the middle of of chaos and just kind of he could like have his arm it seems like he could like have his arm blow off and he just like, or like have his right arm blown off and he would just like use his left arm and keep pointing. Flashed from his glances. He made an effect on me. I don't know how to describe. Yeah, this guy's cool. At Krasny, I have a booger in my nose, I'm sorry. From the rest of the army, Ney angrily rejected calls to surrender and led his men in an astonishing forced march across enemy territory, crossing the frozen Dnieper River at night personally pulling men from the river when they fell through the ice. Surrounded by Cossacks and down to 800 fighting men, they formed square and kept moving. Ney was more than a hero to the army. He was its talisman. News about the army. This one. He's just, he's playing that role of surrounded by unimaginable misery and people in unimaginable misery 
and just obviously it's not a photo you can't get it perfectly how it happened but just he's a guy that to say every like slap you in the face and say you know let's get at it like you drive a car like if like you're in a car that goes into a I'm just thinking of this on the spot into a river and you're panicking you don't know what to do it just seems like he would just slap you and just be like you got to get out and uh yeah he was it wasn't the best example but you know what I mean news of his escape caused rejoicing throughout the army Napoleon himself remarked what a soldier the army is full of brave men but Michel Ney is truly the bravest of the brave Ney led the rear guard for the rest of the retreat, and according to legend, was the last man to cross the Nyman River. Hey, I believe Poland. it. I don't usually His believe legend, but that could easily be it. To make it back alive. Add. What is Ahu now now? Whoa. I don't know. Cool. Oh, yeah. Databricks is the data and AI company. This is great. We help Good. data team. Great. Ney was rewarded with the title Prince of the Moskva and continued to serve throughout 1813, though his relations with the Emperor and Marshal Berthier in particular were increasingly strained. At Lützen, Ney was moved by the conduct of his young conscripts, who bore the brunt of Blücher's surprise attack, but fought back bravely, helping to win victory. Napoleon then entrusted Ney with command of three army corps, 84,000 men. But the plan for him to fall on the enemy's flank at Bautzen went awry. Badly drafted orders led to delay, and the coalition army was able to escape. Ney fought in the Emperor's great victory at Dresden. But ten days later, at Denevitz, his limitations as an army commander were horribly exposed. Throwing himself into an attack, he lost control of the battle and was badly beaten by Bernadotte. 6th of September. My birthday is the 3rd of September. Maybe it's just because my birthday is around there that I think I see a lot of these dates. But I feel like September 1st to like 6th, there are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I feel like I see so many of those dates in important events in history. Again, it could just be I'm looking for those dates because they pop out because they're around my birthday. But I feel like that's... Army of the North. Ney was devastated by his defeat, but Napoleon kept him in command of his northern wing. At the gigantic. By the way, if you guys want to get me some, you guys are going to get me something for my birthday. I know you are. Um, I love a piano, so all of you just chip in a few hundred bucks each and uh, get me a nice piano. The four day Battle of Leipzig, he commanded the northern sector holding the line until a shoulder wound on the last day forced his return to France. He rejoined the army in 1814 and fought in the defense of France, commanding the Young Guard and personally leading a bayonet charge at the Battle of Montmirail. Why do I keep seeing Vladimir Putin right there? He just... Is he a time traveler? In April, Ney, outspoken as ever, was among the first to confront Look, Napoleon I with the reality of his position. That's my thumbnail right there. His abdication. Ney was fated by the restored Bourbon monarchy as France's greatest soldier, but he could not hide his contempt for the returning aristocrats who treated his family with disdain. When the king's niece reduced his wife to tears, Ney confronted her, shouting, I and others were fighting for France while you sat sipping tea in Eng Shut up, you idiot! Who the English Gardens. Others reduced his wife who treated his family with disdain. When the king's niece reduced his wife to tears, Ney confronted her, shouting, I and others were fighting for France while you sat sipping tea in English Gardens. Marie Theresa Charlotte. Duchess of Gardens. In February 1815, Napoleon Idiot. escaped from exile on Elba and landed in France. Ney was horrified by the prospect of civil war and promised the king oh, that I... he'd bring Napoleon back to Paris in an iron cage. Okay. But he soon saw that the army was flocking to Napoleon's banner. When Napoleon appealed to him directly as the hero of Borodino, 
Ney made the fateful decision to cast in his lot with the Emperor. So he might, he's one of those few who I wouldn't be surprised. He seems to do, although he has loyalty to the Emperor, obviously he's doing it here and in self-interest. He, I would have thought he might be the few who, even if people were starting to favor Napoleon again, he might just say to hell with it and do what he thinks, but sometimes you gotta look Once out for more. what's good when for yourself. Napoleon advanced into the Netherlands in June, or maybe that was a good idea for him to do it, I, I don't know. Wellington and Blücher's armies, Ney commanded his left wing. But he made a string of blunders. Against Wellington's troops at Quatre Bras, he was too cautious Quatre when he held bras. the advantage. Too Two cautious. Days later at Waterloo, was he trying to like prove himself? Napoleon left different? much of the tactical handling of the battle to Marshal Ney. It was a mistake. On his own initiative, Ney launched a series of mass cavalry attacks too early and failed to There's launch any coordinated classic, attacks Ney. on Wellington's position until late in the day. He had four horses killed under him and personally led the last doomed attack what by else? the Imperial Guard. Some of them had like tiger pelts. Ney's courage that day um, was awe-inspiring. On their horses. But his decisions helped Ney's courage that day was awe-inspiring. But his decisions helped to cause the French defeat. In the aftermath, Ney spurned several chances to flee France and was arrested for treason by the restored monarchy. A military court refused to pass sentence. The monarchy with that dumb woman. Hayden on his wife or something. His case went to the Chamber of Peers. Go after yourself. With the king's allies demanding that any... A military court refused to pass sentence. So his case went to the Chamber of Peers. With the king's allies demanding that an example be made of Ney, the outcome of his trial was never in doubt. Five. I mean, it says Ney's he gets executed right there at 46, so I, I know the outcome, but... Marshals were among a large majority who voted for the death penalty. Fellow marshals were among a large majority who voted for the death penalty. On the 7th of December, 1815, he was marched into the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris. Soldiers, when I give the order to fire, fire at the heart, he told the firing squad. Wait for the order, it will be my last to you. I protest against my condemnation. I have fought a hundred battles for France, but not one against her. Marshal Ney was among you the most idiots. inspirational you... battlefield commanders in history. A born soldier and brilliant tactician, unless his fiery temperament got the better of him. He lacked the confidence for high command, but under the Emperor's supervision, he proved one of the Grand like Armée's a... greatest combat Hold leaders. Who ordered the cashback? You. Earn a side of 3%. Chase Freedom Unlimited. Four, Marshal Soult. Jean de Dieu Soult was yep. from a small town in southern France that was harsh. and enlisted in the Regiment Royal, aged 16. He died pretty old. He became a tough, capable sergeant and in the build up to the Revolutionary Wars, joined a new battalion of volunteers as their drill instructor. Soult's self confidence. <laughs> That drawing is better than I could do, but... ...and bearing meant he was soon made an officer. Ah, the confidence up. and bearing meant he was soon made an officer. The unit went into action against the Prussians in 1793. In a brutal baptism of fire, half the battalion became casualties, though Soult's own conduct was praised. After a spell on the staff of General Osh, he joined General Lefebvre's crack vanguard division. Soult learned much from Lefebvre, a future fellow marshal, serving first as his chief of staff and later as his best brigade commander. Soult's rise from sergeant to brigadier general took less than three years, 
In the process, he won a reputation as an organized and decisive commander and brilliant tactician. He also began a bitter, long-lasting feud with another rising star, General Michel Ney. In 1799, Soult established himself as one of France's best divisional commanders, fighting under Massena's command at the Battle of Zurich. He was then put in charge of three divisions to pursue General Suvorov through the Alps, proving his ability for high command. In his report to France's new first consul, Napoleon Bonaparte, Masséna wrote, for judgment and courage, Soult has scarcely a superior. I can't believe I can recognize just some of these, especially from the Marshall's videos. I can actually, I'm almost proud of myself. I'm such a terrible learner. Um, it's a little bit easier when I'm really interested in the topic and enjoy uh, learning like this. But just to like see a face in a painting and be like, oh, that's this guy. Thank you guys, you're helping me out with that. The next year, Soult and Massena were besieged in Genoa. Soult led a series of daring raids on the Austrian lines. Until he was shot in the knee and captured, he was robbed and spent days in agony in a filthy hospital. An episode that may explain Soult's later reluctance to lead from the front. On his return Not doing to that Paris, again. Soult received a hero's welcome from Napoleon. His rewards included an honorary rank as Colonel General in the Consular Guard, plus command of troops assembled at Saint-Omer for Napoleon's planned invasion of England. Soult, the old drill instructor, imposed strict discipline and trained his men oh, hard, doggies. earning the nickname Bras de Fer. Iron so I'm arm. distracted so easy. Even Napoleon wondered Iron if he arm. was being too severe, to which Soult replied, those that can't handle what I myself endure will be left behind in the depots. Those that can will be you fit can't take to the heat, conquer get out of the, the kitchen, world. pretty much. Depots. Those that can will be fit to conquer the world. In 1804, Napoleon proclaimed his new empire, and Soult received his marshal's battle. The next year, his impeccably drilled troops became Fourth Corps, the largest corps of the Grande Armée and marched east to take on the Third Coalition. That December, at Austerlitz, Napoleon entrusted Soult's corps with the main attack on the enemy center. As he issued his final orders to his marshals, the Emperor turned to Soult last and said, As for you, Soult, I say only, act as you always do. Wow, that's a hell of a compliment. Telling all these other guys, Ooh, and they must have hated it too, because I guess there was a lot of infighting between marshals over, you know, favor for Napoleon. Um, but yeah, you're there, and you just do you. Fourth Corps' attack was the decisive blow of the battle, though its success owed much to Soult's exceptional divisional commanders, Saint Hilaire and Van Damme. With victory won, Napoleon acclaimed Soult the foremost maneuverer in Europe. However, it was observed that Soult was now less inclined to expose himself to enemy fire, taking a more managerial approach to command. Though his planning, organization, off. and tactical instinct remained superb. The next year, Soult's corps played an important role at the Battle of Jena, and in the pursuit of the defeated Prussian army that followed. In the brutal winter battle at Eylau, his troops held the center of the line. Soult's relationship with Napoleon was excellent, and the Emperor frequently turned to him for advice, much to Marshal Berthier's annoyance. In 1808, Soult was ennobled as the Duke of Dalmatia, and later that year led a corps in Napoleon's invasion of Spain. When the Emperor returned to France, he entrusted the pursuit of the British army to Marshal Soult. The British nicknamed Soult the Duke of Damnation, and he harried them through the mountains of Galicia to La Coruña. But in battle, he could not break their lines, nor prevent their risk. It's cool to think about how commanders might change or change their strategy depending on if or if they know who they're going up against, the commanding person. It's cool that just that that can have a large effect, and so. The other way around in the offensive tactic 
tactic. I guess you could use it in defensive too, but maybe bluffing who's going, uh, you know, what commander is on a battlefield. It could be, you know, difficult to do that, but it's cool. by sea. Sult then marched south and occupied that made Porto, sense. where rumors began that he was considering crowning himself king of Portugal. I'm king! Whether ah. the rumors were serious or not, in May, the British and Portuguese took Sult by surprise and drove him out of Portugal with heavy loss in men and supplies. This was the most ignominious chapter of Sult's mixed record in the peninsula. Five years that saw sparks of brilliance but also missed chance baby right there. Says shocking avarice and a reluctance to cooperate with other commanders. Later in 1809, Soult replaced Marshal Jourdan as King Joseph's chief military advisor and led French forces to a crushing victory over the Spanish at Ocaña. He then oversaw the French occupation of southern Spain. Yeah, he took a different Appointed approach. Governor of Andalusia, Sult administered the region with cold efficiency from his headquarters at Seville, though avoiding harsh measures where possible. He lived in royal style and notoriously looted Spanish churches on such a scale that he soon amassed one of the great art collections in Europe, worth an estimated 1.5 million francs. 250 million. He was increasingly aloof and even his aides found him difficult to like. Sult's character is hard and above all egotistical, one wrote. He takes no more than a passing interest in those around him. What a dick. In 1811, with Marshal Massena's army stalled outside Lisbon, Napoleon ordered Sult to give support. Like many of Fine. Napoleon's long-range interventions in Spain, the objectives were unrealistic. Napoleon every now and then, like, what the hell is going on in Spain? You guys can't handle Spain? I'm taking, like, Prussia, Austria, and, and uh, uh, Russia all at once. The insult marched north with 20,000 men, capturing Badajoz, but withdrew on receiving news of an enemy landing near Barossa. Two months later, he marched north again to relieve Badajoz, now besieged Crazy by the Crazy that enemy, the British are able to and keep Beresford's Gibraltar. larger army en route at Albuera. Salt launched a flanking attack that threw the enemy into confusion, but he failed to follow up his advantage and left the tactical handling of the battle to others. Nor was he on the spot to inspire his troops, and his army suffered a bloody defeat. The next year, Wellington's victory at Salamanca forced Soult to abandon his palace in Seville and retreat to Valencia. Oh, uh, going over to Suchet, because Suchet took care of his business now, because of your mess-ups. Though that altered, gotta get into his territory. the satisfaction of reoccupying Madrid and pursuing Wellington's army back they to could the have had a harder frontier. Assignment. Almeida, where that giant explosion happened. In 1813, Napoleon summoned Soult to Germany where he fought at Lützen and supervised the main attack at Bautzen. But when news arrived of the calamitous French defeat at Vitoria, Napoleon sent Soult back to Spain to take charge. Soult inherited a demoralized, disorganized army. He quickly imposed order, turned it around, and attacked. It was an impressive feat, but his mostly young conscripts were up against experienced, well-led troops. Two attempts to relieve the besieged garrison of San Sebastian failed. Soult began a fighting retreat through the Pyrenees mountains back to France. Despite the limitations of his demoralized conscripts, he ensured Wellington's army had to fight every step of the way, counter-attacking whenever possible, and offering resistance till the end, even as Napoleon's empire began to collapse. The last battle of the campaign was fought at Toulouse, a bloody and unnecessary one, as Napoleon had abdicated four days earlier. Under the Bourbon Restoration, Soult became an unpopular minister of war. Like Marshal Ney, he initially opposed Napoleon's return from exile but saw which way the wind was blowing and rallied to the emperor. Napoleon made several dubious appointments in 1815. 
one was to pick Soult as his new chief of staff, replacing Marshal Berthier. Not only did this waste Soult's command abilities, since his new role was merely to implement Napoleon's orders, Soult also inherited kind of like a promotion into motion at a the same complex time. staff system of Berthier's own devising. Crucial errors resulted during the Waterloo campaign, with orders going astray and commanders unsure of their role. Soult's warning not to underestimate Wellington's army was dismissed by Napoleon. You think that because Wellington defeated you, he must be a great general. I tell you that he is a bad general, that the English are bad troops, and this will be over by lunchtime. Following mm. Napoleon's defeat, Soult lived in exile until 1819, then returned to France under a political amnesty. After the July Revolution, he served as a reforming Minister of War, and three times as President of the Council of Ministers, effectively France's Prime Minister. He also became the Grand Old Man of the French Army, elevated to Commander-in-Chief <sighs> with the exalted rank of Marshal General of France. Stories he could tell. Soult died aged 82 in the same town where he was born, known today oh, wow. as saint amand Soult. Soult's record as a marshal was mixed. A brilliant and intelligent organizer whose ability to deliver a master stroke or inspire his troops to victory waned with time. Yet he was one of the few marshals that Napoleon could trust with a large independent command. A quality he needed desperately, but found in short supply. Suchet, nay, Soult. Join us for uh, the that, it says It says six, it means one. All part of Napoleon's marshals, as we reveal our- I like all three of them, obviously him, nay. I, I always had a lot of respect for Suchet, it was just cemented, increased a bit. And nay, a great one. Probably, probably my three favorites so far are nay, Suchet, and Mura. Top three, I'd say. Coming soon. Those are my top three. Brand new to the Epic History TV store, Manga Marshals. We have 10 of Manga the best Marshalls. available oh, as God. mugs and stickers in the mo A great channel, great video, awesome video. Guys are right about this time about Suchet, although you're going to be right once if you keep saying every video. Uh, but awesome. Loved it. Uh, I'm going to do part six and continue the, uh, or do the first two, I think, that I never saw to start with to end it actually and um then pick another series it's been awesome hopefully we can do the same thing with another part of history another series hope you guys are doing good love y'all see you guys next time store now check the video just